challenge was um, something that came about when a mother of a child that was in hospital a lot um, realised that she could sum up the type of care that her child was getting within 15 steps of, of entering a ward and so she developed this way of measuring care which AWP have now taken and are, uh, with the help of service users and carers have developed into a tool that the staff in AWP can use to measure the experience that service users and carers on their wards are getting. What, what it isn't is another audit tool. It's not something that the staff need to worry about preparing for in, in advance of, our, of, of a visit from, from us, really. Yeah, it, it's not measuring a tick box. It's actually um, what, what it feels like to be on the ward. And, and actually a lot of that comes down to very simple things that we've um, been able to find when we've gone round and, and talked to service users and carers in the wards. If, if an individual has worked on a ward for a year or two, they're very familiar with that environment and, and you can almost forget how unfamiliar that environment is to people that are new to the, that environment. That's, I think, really what Julie's saying is that illustrates one of the really good points about this, is that it, this isn't about major changes that you need to make on a ward to make it um, fulfil a criteria. It's about common sense, looking at things that make a real difference but actually don't take any great changes. One of the things about the 15 steps which I really like is the fact that it's not about booking an appointment and us turning up with clipboards and, and, and assessing a ward. It's about us going along on a day and putting a fresh set of eyes and actually looking around and saying what we see that day and then having immediate feedback to the staff. So maybe, maybe our team leader might be in touch with the ward and say the 15 steps challenge will take place sometime over the next two weeks or month so so they have some idea to expect us at some at, at some point but um really for them to just carry on their day-to-day -day routines as usual and maybe if one of the members of staff can give us a, a a quick tour of the the ward that's that's useful and and then it's good if we can talk to as many of the service users and carers that are around at the time, really, to get their their perspective on on their care and treatment. And really, it's a, um, a not a threatening tool. It's not like we're there to criticise. We're there as sort of critical friends, really, to try and get the service better for everybody. But we're like highlighting good practice in certain areas and hoping that other areas will be able to learn from that. And and really, basically, sort of being positive about what we find and most of the staff that I've spoken to have seemed to find it a really positive tool to actually have it's a tool where service they're getting feedback from service users and carers directly because when we go on to a ward we can talk to people they're not worried about talking to us because we're not members of staff and and so therefore they've got a conduit to feed we then can feed back to the staff uh, the, the a message straight yeah. away and I think as a as a uh, previous service user on on a ward myself I, I, I feel I can relate to the people that are currently uh, receiving treatment as an inpatient on those yeah, wards. Our, our, our experience and um, expertise that we've built up over the time of our involvement to then help the service users and carers that we, we speak to, to be able to feed back. And I think they the people that we have met have valued that as well, haven't they? I mean, quite a few, especially some of the carers, were very pleased to be able to have a way of feeding back.